Do you live in a household with challenging people where you get frustrated and they trigger you even though you say, I'm going to handle it well today and then you lose it? Well, you need to listen to this. Absolutely. I think we can all relate to this one. Welcome to Coffee Time with Brenda and Mary. Today we're talking about living with people that challenge you. Um, is there somebody in your home where you have conflicts? often with or maybe it's at work or maybe it's a neighbor or how about those in-laws so if there's people that are challenging for you uh, we're going to talk about today how you can handle that in your life so that you walk away from the day a little bit lighter a little bit happier and i think this is a very common topic because i know i've lived in that situation at least one time in my life you know, there's always someone who says, oh, this person really gets under my skin. For sure. And if it, it could be your birth family, the people you grew up with, or it could be the family that you have today, your children. I mean, who doesn't have children that don't drive them crazy once in a while? Yeah. So it's about how can we, you know, we often talk about how can we handle our stress better. Mm -hmm. And so, but this is a big stressor when you live with somebody that is constantly that you know you're butting heads with oh yeah it's not i'm not going to say it's the easiest thing but it's definitely doable because in essence if you think about it i can't make you act a certain way mm -hmm. you're responsible for how you act i'm responsible for how i act so if i go into a situation that i know is going to trigger me what do I do? I take that extra care to get into a state of alignment, a state of balance, a state of present moment to say, hey, it's, it's gonna happen, right? I can't change that person's behavior per se, so I need to change me. The one thing that I've learned is have no expectations of others. Don't think, mm -hmm. hey, well, they're gonna eventually change. You know, if they do, great, but in the meantime, I should change. But isn't that so hard when you're talking about kids? Like we all walk around as parents um, with expectations of our kids of how they behave and how they talk to us or how they talk to their other parent or their siblings. Like there's expectations all over the place. Yeah, dropping the expectations will make life a lot easier. I over the years have no expectations. So when I'm in a situation where I'm in an environment where someone would generally trigger me in the past, I know what to expect. I have no expectations of them being better, but I'm going to be better because I can react or I can choose to respond. Hmm. That takes a lot of living in the present to be able to do that. Absolutely. Right? Like and when we're running around <laughs> going from place to place, oftentimes we're like wondering about where we're going to go to next. Like it's so hard to stay in the present. And then that person walks into the room and you feel unarmed. You feel like I, I don't have any tools. Okay, so that's, that's it. It's going into your toolbox, but it's practicing what's in your toolbox. So if you are in a situation at home where you have someone triggering you or getting under your skin, or sometimes even they, they taunt you on purpose because they know you're trying to work on yourself and it's bothering them, mm -hmm. so they'll come at you more. It's almost like it's exaggerated at some point. There's the highest, broadest thing you can do is think, wow, what a beautiful lesson I'm getting from this person. Yeah. That's the highest level. If you look at it like, okay, this person's going to come at me, might be my spouse, my kids, my in-laws, whoever. I'm going to deep breathe and say, what a blessing because I get to practice my reaction with this person. So the people that trigger us the most are our best teachers. Can you think of some good teachers in your life? Yeah, Mary? I've got lots of really good <laughs> teachers. For me, like I have, I leave notes all over my house when I want to try something new. And so I have on my chalkboard in the kitchen, I wrote rise above. Oh, beautiful. Because this person was coming to visit our home and you know, when she leaves, I'm always kind of a, a bit of a mess to be honest. And my kids are looking at me like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, well, there's nothing wrong with me. Everything's our fault. And, you know, and I just want to get fighting. Mm -hmm. um, so I put the words right ab rise above to remind me to stay high, you know, to stay above all that. What feels catty, it feels so immature when I'm in it. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe I'm doing it. Um, so just to remind me to stay um, light. Because what you're doing is you're pulling yourself out of the drama. Mm -hmm. So... There's it takes practice, but really when we're in the drama and you're in the drama, it's really hard to get out of the drama because yeah. you're in it. 
So you're doing the right thing. You're preparing yourself before the event happens. Yeah. But when we have a lot of people coming over or something like that, you're maybe stressed about getting food. Mm -hmm. You have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So you're actually putting yourself in a situation that's a bit trickier than just having someone always home, which is the natural state of the house. Yeah. Yeah, so cool. you're going into something where you're kind of more stressed out. Mm -hmm. And when we're stressed or tired, it's really hard to rise above. Well, rise above works for people in the house too. Okay. <laughs> so it's okay. on there always. Do you find it's easier with, say, family members? Because you kind of, there's more consistency. You can take that time to breathe and reconnect with yeah. yourself. Yeah, it's in the kitchen. I'm always in the kitchen first. So mm -hmm. when I read that in the morning, rise above, and the first person comes into the kitchen, and they each come in, eventually yeah. um, I'm in a better frame of mind I would say because okay. it, it kind of it's that's my trigger to stay light um, to whoever comes in okay so there is one tip you know it's a great tip put sticky notes to remind you rise mm -hmm. above or whatever it is yeah. right the other thing is when I you know I, I come from a different place now because whenever someone acts a certain way I realize they're in their own you know their own traumas their own patterns of behavior they're unconscious when they kind of get under my skin and i look at them with compassionate eyes saying mm -hmm. well you know what they're going through something okay again there's boundaries doesn't yeah. mean they can tumble all over me but if they step out of line and i say hey i don't let it throw me off right mm -hmm. so it's being in awareness okay the person's acting that way when the person acts that way and they get a razz out of you, they're more likely going to do it. Most people act that way and come at us because they are unbalanced. They have a little bit of negativity within them. Their darker side wants to trigger your dark side yeah. and get you guys fighting or arguing because that's what you know the darkness of this planet wants. But if they're coming at you and you're just sending them love, they're going to be very bored of you and they're going to stop coming at you. Yeah, so the trick is, is put the sticky notes, do your best to stay in that light, in that alignment and say, Hey, you know, I get you're having a day, but keep me out of it. Yeah. That's a good way to reframe the people that you see as difficult when they come into your life, see them as a teacher. So I think that's a really good mm -hmm. key message. See them as a teacher that you can teach, that you can grow, that there's an area here of growth for you. Um, use sticky notes to remind you to stay up um, when they come in and contact Brenda if you need help with those people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one more good tip, and I think we both have used this before, affirmations. Oh yeah. My house is full of love, joy, harmony, and happiness. Mm -hmm. My love is full of love, joy. And if you have kids that are willing to say this with you, have those people who are in alignment say it with you. It will change the atmosphere in your home. That's so easy. It's and so free. easy and free. And what will happen is that person who's causing will most likely will join in yeah. and be part of it. And sometimes they'll push against it. Yeah. But then you'll kind of know who the problem child is in the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe that problem child is the one that needs a session with me. That's right. So if you do have one of those problem children or in-laws, <laughs> um, give Brenda a call. www.sobrilliant.ca she has helped. She can help you. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, visit us at sobrilliant.ca. Sending you lots of love and light. Until next time.